I'm here. Um, Alderman Brian Johnson. Okay, Mr. Chuck Yang. Here. All right, Mr. Alex Zacharias. Here. Uh, Ms. Beth Kowalski. We see you. I'm multitasking this morning. It's so present. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, Ms. Rizal Paguero. Ms. Sadie Wilson. Mr. Timothy Perlitz. Okay. Um, moving to item C, approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda for the December 13th meeting? Motion to approve. Okay. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> All right. The agenda is approved. Approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the October 25th meeting? Motion to approve. Thank you, Alex. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The minutes from the October 25th meeting are approved, and that brings us to regular business. Uh, most excellently, the election of our vice chair, Mr. Yang, I, I hope you've heard through the grapevine that we we elected you to be the, the vice chair. Do you accept that nomination? Um, I humbly accept. I, I All right. Meeting minutes. Um, no spoilers. <laughs> good. Um, okay, so do we need to make a motion for that? Or we just vote? Or do we need to open up the floor and call for nominations from the floor? I can't remember what the protocol was. Um, I think I think since you guys voted on it last time and approved it, this is more to just put on record that he has accepted the nomination. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And that brings us to number two, two, consideration with possible action to review and approve the large scale public art project request for proposal, which was included in our packet. Laura, can I hand it over to you for further information on that? Absolutely. Um, so I hope you guys have reviewed it. Um, and this is the time that we can make edits and kind of adjust things. Um, for a little background on it, we have a total of $50,000 of American Rescue Plan Act dollars um, that has been allocated towards a large scale public art project. Uh, this is something permanent that would become part of the city's public art collection. Uh, and part of this call, uh, we wanted to narrow it down slightly in scope because initially it was like, let's have a public art project. and just put it wherever we have property. Um, so to kind of put some guardrails on it and, and provide a little bit more framework, um, the mayor and staff, we kind of identified five different potential locations, but we are open to other sites if artists have something else in mind. Um, with that being said, obviously discussing it with staff and trying to figure out the specifics of those alternate locations um, there are some interior spaces that we've identified as well as some exterior uh, in the hopes that we can encourage artists of all mediums to potentially apply for this opportunity. Um, the loose timeline for it is hopefully announcing and releasing the call in the start of the new year, uh, keeping that call open for roughly two months. Uh, and then going through the purchasing uh, process, having an internal committee review all the applications and then sending uh, kind of the selected finalists to this body to then pick the final finalists. And then in okay. through kind of December. Were there any um, comments or edits or things that that kind of stood out that might need some some updates or or more information included in there. I had a question about the Walnut Tunnel. Um, <clears throat> it looks like there's already public art there. there There's fish. Yep. Um, that so is, would those come down? 
that is city owned uh, as part of the Life of the River project, which I believe went up roughly between 2002 to 2010. Um, we have reached out to those artists um, several times because that work is, is needing repair. Um, it's definitely showing its age. The artists who created that piece are not interested in, in repairing it or updating it. So I think that's a discussion that we might need to have as far as do we um, restore it and have some artwork that's kind of complementing that in that tunnel or do we deaccession that piece and completely rethink how that tunnel is, is um, being enhanced with art. Um, just uh, <clears throat> while we're looking at those images, um, the caption number four, Walnut Tunnel along the Fox River Trail, it looks like um, a last word got cut off from the caption exterior somewhat, probably says protected. So just as a note for that there. Um, I I think it would, so as I look at this as an artist, the whole proposal, and I my questions are kind of like, what are the dimensions of these places? And then when I look at the Walnut Tunnel Bridge, I'm immediately like, would I be responding to those fish or or I assume that they would stay. So I would, I'm curious to see what the other members of the committee say, but my instinct is either we specify for artists, you know, fish stay and get repaired or fish stay and you work around them or fish can come out. But I'd almost say it would be better for the city and for this body to just decide or temporarily remove that location as an option until those details are sorted out. Um, because just looking at that raised those questions for me. Or the potential that we can leave it up to the proposing artists to either keep the fish and work around it with their design piece if they want to include that or if they just want that to be removed. Sure. I mean, I guess one question I'd have is like, how are those installed? You know, how much time and energy and money am I going to have to spend as the artist to remove them? Um, so I think maybe we just be prepared to answer those questions. And that allows for what you're talking about, Chuck, with like the artist can go either way. Um, maybe, Laura, you said that they need repair. Um, could we include some details of, of like the state of the fish and or how they're mounted to the wall so that people could maybe have a more, a better understanding of that? Or again, if we don't want to include that much information, drop this as a site would be my suggestion. I think Alex, do you have thoughts? Oh, sorry. Um, I just have a, a sort of a separate question, a related question. Um, you know, the city of Green Bay has a sister city relationship with Guanajuato, Mexico. And one of an, and one of the exchanges is arts and culture. Um, there's a plan for them to come again this year. Would, th would this be something perhaps they could apply for or, or does U.S. citizenship and, uh, need to apply? With our funds, I um, think the grant is limited to artists eighteen and older in the United States. Citizens, okay, right. I'm not. I'm trying to find that language again. I'm not sure. Um, it would. You have to have citizenship for federal funds. Okay, there we gotcha. go. Gotcha. All right. And I think we could have an organization based in the U.S. coordinating with. It would have to be researched for sure. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it'd be like bringing in a visiting artist or something, but maybe this is not the time for that. Laura, did you have thoughts about the Walnut Tunnel? Um, I liked what Chuck had mentioned as far as I think, I think like you said, acknowledging like there is artwork that is already in this tunnel. Um, mm -hmm. At this time, I don't think we really have a a full handle on whether or not we want to continue having that artwork up in that tunnel or if we want something different. Um, so I think mm -hmm. it's a note in there because I, I do think that there is value in including this. This is a site that mm -hmm. staff had kind of pointed out as, as an area of interest. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe just making a note of like, yes, there is artwork in there. Um, it is in need of repair. At this time, we're uncertain whether or not we're going to be repairing it or removing it altogether. With so that, again, if I'm an artist pitching a mural and you, I don't know I, whether fish stay or not, I mean, that really drastically changes the design that I propose. Can we, can we decide either way or? Yeah, if I, if I were an artist, I would want a, a clean canvas just so I can do my work. 
or I'm, you know, if people are into responding to the fish, that's great. But let's say someone designs a proposal and then the city decides, oh, the cost of maintaining or these sculptures is too much. Like, is, is there any way we could move decisively in either direction before this goes out? We being the city. We being the city or this body? Well, this body doesn't decide what happens with that sculpture. It's the property of the city. So we can um, internally, maybe have some conversations with the downtown Green Bay Inc. folks. So I think have some opinions um, on this piece within their districts, maybe the downtown mm -hmm. association as well. But um, who actually maintains these pieces? The city would. City Parks Department, right? right? So is that something, so is that something that whoever's the body, the governing body that maintains these pieces would have to determine whether or not they're going to continue to maintain these pieces or whether they should just be taken down and different art gets placed down there. So that's an ongoing discussion that we still need to have. Maybe we just strike this for now and then just put that potentially this may be an al alternate location. So at least they're aware that this might become an alternate location, but we're still making a decision on it. Sure, and with the note of kind of the the continued presence of the fish is up in the air. Uh, Lord, do you the, do you the exterior walls, right? The neon mm -hmm. by the tunnel, but the walls leading to the tunnel. What thoughts? Anyone? So we just do the exterior, but not the interior. Is what you're proposing for this? This particular grant? Yeah, that's, I guess we could phrase it where artists can consider just the exterior and then let them know that there's a potential that the interior um, may be up for discussion too, pending, pending um, decision on whether the existing sculptures stay or not. Okay. Um... To me, I mean, I think that's a very reasonable suggestion. To me, it, it doesn't, it, it presents the same issue of like, as an artist needing to make a plan that would be accepted for funding, you don't, I mean, you're basically either making two plans or you're making a plan and hoping that it goes the way that you've kind of cast your lot. Um, related to that, Laura or anyone else, what's the nature of the the maintenance necessary? Like, are the, are the fish rusting? Is it the fixtures themselves? The fish themselves are rusting. Um, it's kind of a three-fold system. There's lighting elements that don't really quite function anymore. Um, mm -hmm. There's a interior metal skeleton that a lot mm -hmm. of them are rusting. And then there's an exterior kind of plastic shell that is kind of showing its age hazing. Some of them are, uh, I don't know, I think there's some that have been dented or, or pushed in by passers-by. Um, so there's a number of things that they're they're showing their age. And I think with the the creating artists not expressing any interest in repairing them, mm -hmm. um, I myself am in favor of starting fresh with this space. I think that makes a lot of space. I mean, plastic hazing, there's not really much coming back from that. Plus, you don't have artists interested in doing it. And I'm assuming the city is not looking to spend a lot of money on conservation level repairs, right? Like in terms of, so it, it seems like maybe those could just come down and maybe they could be repurposed or, I mean, they've had a good almost over 20 year run for an outdoor sculpture. That seems not bad. Um, I mean, offering, I, I like that what you had mentioned as far as repurposing it offering it up in the call saying, we intend to take these down. If you mm -hmm. as an artist want to repurpose these and incorporate it somehow, um, but overall the intention is to take them down. I think that makes sense. And it kind of provides that clarity in there. Okay. But then Does everyone else feel comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I do have a question. Was mm -hmm. there a maintenance plan for the fish to begin with? No, um, these were, so all of the life of the river pieces were commissioned by um, the mayor's beautification committee, which doesn't exist anymore. That was a 
the body within this department, I believe, um, that is no longer acting. And this commission is kind of, we, we've kind of adopted them. It's never been officially like, now they're yours, but it makes the most sense that this body would kind of be the, the caretakers of that work. So um, for the future plan, is there like uh, maintenance built into that plan for artists? Like would they have to update it or would the city uh, keep it fresh? With these funds that we have for ARPO, we aren't able to reserve any of it for maintenance, uh, unfortunately. We do have other sources of funds that we would look to use for maintenance of not just this piece, but any piece. Um, mm -hmm. The 1% um, for our dollars that we do get through um, TIF funded projects could potentially be used for, for maintenance. That's a great question, Sadie, and probably like a really vital part of thinking about public art. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and in my, the current call, going back to our current call, it calls for plans for art. Does it also include plans for maintenance? Obviously, the money couldn't fund it, but it seems like that, I'm sorry, I'm asking that without having read closely enough to see. There is a request for um, artwork maintenance in there. Um, mm -hmm. This very you know, overarching. I see the one page, yeah, okay. Not incredibly, yeah. but at least some some inkling of a plan that, okay, here's the things that we're going to need to be keeping in mind if we would select mm -hmm. this. Um, um, thank you. So I have an, another thought. One, I want to say it's really great to see an interior space. I think this, this commission has kind of tended to think of public art as monumental sculptures and murals exclusively. So it's nice to see that there could be other kinds of art. Um, I wonder if, and I know that this is a little bit of a pain to ask, but could these photos include approximate dimensions? Yeah. Um, so thinking about like this, the, the city hall council chambers walls or the Walnut Street Bridge, like, you know, that basic dimensions. Yeah, I can definitely include kind of rough dimensions. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those spaces. Um, some of them are a little bit more open to interpretation, but for council chambers, mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I do have dimensions for um, Walnut Tunnel that I can include in there too, to just give a little bit more of a, a idea of what they have to work with. Um, related to the green space um, at 109 Dowsman Street, is that moose a permanent fixture? No. That is a piece that was uh, commissioned by On Broadway during their winter fest, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Brian would know. <laughs> could could we add a note just, again, for artists saying, like, the moose was, you know, is no longer on site? Because, again, if I'm an artist looking at that site, my first thought is, like, well, what, what do I do that's going to be in dialogue with this existing sculpture? So if that is not a concern and that pad is available, that would be... I would want to know that. Or My bigger question on the, the museum. My bigger question on the museum site there, Beth, are you guys still doing anything with that parking lot that's going to disrupt that site? Um, we still have to run conduit on the east side, but that won't affect that's on the edge of the parking lot for future EV charging. Um, but that's a spring project. Um, there will be landscaping for safety reasons, which will affect some boulders and things around the trees that are below that so no the parking lot is was milled and filled and is what it is um but we will have some more aesthetic landscaping that'll match more of the river and so cars frankly don't drive straight through our parking lot into the river again great good improvement there great question brian brian do you have other thoughts about these as a person who's deeply invested in downtown? No, I mean, I, I think they're good sites. Um, I, I'm personally a huge fan of making upgrades to that tunnel. I think the fish are are worn. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think even just you think of how much lighting has evolved in 20 years. Um, uh, you know, it, it, 
I want to be clear, it's not a bias, right? I, meaning that I'm excited to see whatever proposals come forward. But I, since the discussion has focused around the fish, I, I just wanted to at least express that I think they're they're due for a refresh. Um, the you know that that under under the Nishki Bridge that has been a little bit of a a, a problem area uh, for for trash and in um, small level graffiti and vandalism. So it just might be something that we want to think about. I think that's always a concern. Um, graffiti can be washed up typically, but when it's on a piece of art, what does that mean for maintenance? Mm -hmm. Talking about lighting, was there for the tunnel? Um, was the concept of the fish lighting the tunnel also? And will there be, if the fish come down, is the intention then to install different lighting? I guess if that was the concept of the tunnels provide lighting initially. The fish lighting was more um, decorative or like an added element. There is kind of utilitarian um, fluorescent lighting throughout that tunnel. so. It, that would remain okay. um, to kind of just maintain visibility and safety in that space, but the lighting from the fish sculptures was minimal. Okay. Um, of course, they don't work now, so it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, is if are the so is this ultimately depending on how many different art pieces and how much they cost will determine on how many pieces go up and where they go up. The way that it's written right now is that um, artists can request a max budget of 50000 So if there were two proposals that came in in 25, you could, in theory, select two of them. Um, I think overall, the, the emphasis has been placed on having a large and impactful piece. So realistically, that means a higher budget. Um, I don't know if we want to change that wording, perhaps, and maybe it's just we're gonna go with one project that's 50,000. Oh, is that the intention um, was one project? Cause, cause that's what I thought was potentially that it's gonna be five projects to fill these five piece places. These are just five identified locations. Okay. Like you could go here. We've also mentioned that if you have an alternate location that you're very interested in, like please discuss that and we're, we're open to having locations outside of these but this was just to provide a little bit of framework um i can change the wording if that's the no no i i failed to read that last paragraph there oh it's all good um overall though the goal of this is to have some a large and impactful piece or pieces um, that really create an impact um, in a space or spaces So I can maybe look at rewording. Um, I have another question uh, related to, to the city hall vestibules. Those seem already pretty tight with regard to ADA requirements. And I'm wondering what the, well, maybe it's just the photo, the way it's photographed. Cause in the, oh no, the, so we've got the, the North vestibule, the South vestibule, and then North and South entrances. And those are, different, right? Correct. So there's kind of the exterior entrance that is slightly covered. Um, uh -huh. It's just kind of the landscaping area in front of City Hall. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the actual um, vestibule entrance, which is a bit more cramped for floor space, I would say, but I think yeah. we could explore mobiles or something kind of more not footed on the ground, but more so um, suspended. Okay, yeah, I think with those, it would be good for us to, if not retake the photos to, well, maybe just list dimensions and say, you know, it can't be on the ground here. <laughs> I mean, just making that really clear. I, probably people who deal in big sculptures will know that instinctively, but since the other spaces sort of seem like they would allow for larger sculptures, that was confusing to me, but I am also not a sculptor, so. Well, potentially there could be murals placed in these locations too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if it's if it's covered, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not climate controlled, right? Because it's a transitional space, so you couldn't have like framed work there. Mm -hmm. But like textile art. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, yeah, the vestibules are heated. Oh, okay. I, I'm thinking like, so they'd be protected, but the humidity would be such that you'd still want material works made of more durable materials than paper or even more durable materials than say paint on canvas. Yeah, I think for printed materials or things like that, having them cited in council chambers or or um, yeah. more more stable climate or conditions. I wonder if you could do a vinyl installation on those vestibules, like vinyl decals. Anyway, okay. Other questions, thoughts about this RFP? Do we have to make a motion to approve or are we just having a I conversation? Think we're, we're right now just having a conversation. Okay. We, we didn't formally declare that, but yeah. Um, and, and the language all looked good to me. Well, sounds like we've said what we want to say. Do I hear a motion to approve the the proposal with some of the suggested amendments? Is that okay with you, Laura? Yeah. As far as the amendments that I have, I think overall most of them are just providing more details on these sites. So dimensions of interior spaces, making note of the fish sculptures and, and the city's intent to remove those. Um, and then, um, yeah, more more on the dimensions of Nitschke Bridge, um, removal of that the moose is just a temporary space over at Dousman, um, mm -hmm. and kind of making note more of the details of these sites. Other than okay. those edits, were there, was there anything else that you guys thought should be added or changed at this time? One one. Other question is for the location where the moose is placed over by the library. Is that is that space meant to be like a rotating art piece location? And then any permanent artwork that we're placing based on this would be in the green space and not on that platform. That space was in, um, not listed as one of our rotating art sites. Um, I was just thinking more like it feels. It was for that site itself, similar to our rotating art piece. Because it seems like I've seen multiple different art pieces get placed there. So or in that within that area. So I've always I thought maybe that's just like a rotating art piece that's not for the city, but you know, used by other entities. <laughs> I mean, that is true. The the space has been utilized. Um it was originally um housing the 9-11 memorial. Mm -hmm. um, and since that was in disrepair, it was removed. And it's just kind of been in this limbo. In and the so meantime. people so, just said, hey, can we just use this? Book yeah, now? which I mean, is a great <laughs> use of space. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's worth exploring that too. If, if that is a space that we want to continue having be this rotating site, I'm not opposed to that. Um, but also if we get- I am opposed to that. I th I think since we have a rotating site right across the street, we've kind of checked that box for that location. Um, but I think since it is such a prominent space, it has such a, kind of, I don't know, the, the layout for it is great mm -hmm. um, to have something a little bit more permanent, a little bit more striking. Um, so we it sounds like we would like a proposal for a sculpture that would go there. Could we also include the dimensions of that slab? For people, I mean, I, I presume it's something an artist could bolt work to. I don't think we have a slab there, right? I don't think there's a slab existing there anymore, but the conduit for lighting is still. Available. Oh, and is that? It looks like concrete. Is it just like a gravel path or something? No, it, there's. It's a pad. Yeah, there's a pad there. Pad. There's that. The the moose is the moose is anchored into the pad. Okay, so what whatever those dimensions are, that would be another thing. I think, like, if if we'd like to encourage people to take advantage of that spot, to let them know how, what kind of platform they have there. The eleven piece was where where in the picture you see like a, a circle, and that must be where the gravel is that you're talking about. Where the moose is, the moose is actually sitting on the concrete. It might be the walkway that used to be the walkway up to the ninth in the morning. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
sidewalk leading up to the... so would we then not want the artwork piece to be on the sidewalk piece where the moose is sitting because that we would still want to keep that as sidewalk to view the art piece which would go in the kind of like if you looked on the grass in the or top view you see like the circle that used to be where the 9-11 memorial yeah is. it's the, so that what's where, being called as a, as a pad is was actually more of like an apron or an entrance to that previous pad that was the memorial um i think there's an opportunity with a budget this size to create a, a more formal larger pad should an artist propose that um, but there is a little little piece of concrete there that's attached to the existing trail. We just need to make sure that that trail remains open and unobstructed. I think we could make note of that apron or sidewalk, but we would want a new footing board because um, I don't know. I don't know the specs of, of that concrete, whether or not right. it's <laughs> able to hold a permanent piece. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we just need clarification, like on this overview, um, showing where it is on the site that we're intending for the art piece to go and what the artists should be designing for. Yeah, I think that'd be good because we do have, it's sort of a strange area if you look at the property lines. We've got um, a parcel that's city owned. We've got right of way. We've got the museum really close by. So just yeah. So we might want to show an outline within this parcel area of saying this is where this is a site, right? Mm -hmm. This is the site that you're going to be working in. Versus when I look at this our entire thing, it's like as an artist, you know, like there's no boundaries, right? All this green space, you know, what what actual location are you? No, Chuck, I think that's a great suggestion. So just some sort of de delineation on that image should be helpful for people to know where they're aiming. And there's also three electrical boxes, two of which are the counties, one which is, I'm assuming, city bridge related. That should be probably called out. And I don't know how everybody feels, but that tree, that small tree uh, that's closest to Dowsman Street, which you can kind of see on there, that mm -hmm. tree was also, Brian, I don't know if you remember this, but was donated. I'll dig through my emails, but there was a special group. So there was a tree from 9-11 that somebody grafted or spliced or did something with and created trees. And so after the 9-11 monument was put, then the tree was also another dedicated thing. So I don't know if there's any record. That was a museum at all. That was all city at the time, but like everybody assumes that that location's us and it's not. Um, I don't know if that group exists anymore, but if an artist came in and said, hey, can I take down the tree? I just want everybody to be aware that there's a backstory to the tree. I would also say, no, you can't take down the tree. Like we're not cutting down urban trees for art. I mean, that's- Because I can't remember what kind of special tree it is, but it doesn't feel, it, it, it's not been diseased. It's may, been, has, has had two cars zip past it um and still survive so <laughs> maybe parks knows a little bit more about it but like i said i'll try to dig through a bunch of my emails but that has to be go back at least for me seven eight years ago yeah so what would that have been 20 i don't even know if that was i have to look but i'll see what i can find for you laura okay mm -hmm. And you said it's not diseased, Beth. It's an, it's an no, otherwise healthy. No, I can't remember what species it is, and maybe that's where Parks does, but all around the property of the museum, both city and county had ash trees, and the city has been taking them, you know, done different treatments, taking them down when they've had to. There's one more I need to take down at the front entrance of our parking lot because it's going gonna, it's gonna to topple over. So it's it's not an, um doesn't have the emerald ash borer issue. I just don't remember what, the special tree is okay great um with the addition of the amendments i uh, motion to approve yes second. second all in favor aye aye, aye. all opposed all right the motion passes um that brings us to f the coordinator's report and project updates 
Um, thank you guys for reviewing the RFP. Um, I'll make those updates and then yeah, we'll be releasing that in the new year. Hopefully get some neat stuff coming in. Um, update on our small um, public art grants, which was with that ARPA funds. Um, some of those projects are moving through. Some of them have actually completed. Um, if you get a chance to go over to Napoli's Lounge, um, the mural restoration for the We Will Be Seen mural, Chu finished that up last month. Um, so we're kind of finishing up final grant paperwork with that, but it looks really great. So go check it out. Um, the Chantels, um, that was the women's Green Bay's longest running women's singing group, um, one of the first grant recipients that we awarded. Um, they're actually going to be performing tomorrow night um, at 7 p.m. at New Hope Presbyterian for anyone who would like to go visit that. Um, they're also going to be performing on Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, over at uh, Bethany Methodist. Methodist Church. Um, that's not a grant eligible location because it's over in Ashwaubenon, but for anyone who wants to see the performances, um, I can send more details through email if you'd like. Um, Non-perishable food items are always welcome to help support food pantries at those concerts. Um, and then on a note with Chantel's, they are going to be doing a few additional performances just because some of their locations are located out of very eligible areas. Um, so that project might get extended a little bit into the new year, but um, they've been, been going through and, and working on some of their performances. Um, still working through with Wea Calif on, um, basically her agreement's been finalized. I just need to get the check requests from her. Um, same thing with Sage, all of their materials have been approved. Um, still waiting on um, April Beisinger. Uh, she had the Bring Weaving to the Bay project. We're still working on kind of flushing out some of those project details before that's been approved. Uh, Evergreen Theater, their agreement has been finalized along with Green Bay Community Theater. Um, Neville Public Museum Foundation, we, we approve that. So send in your check requests. I'll, I'll send them on to finance for you. Um, and then still working uh, with Noah Simon and Cujo and Shuli on project details before that, those are finalized. Uh, Noah Simon had the um, community unhoused uh, original performance play, uh, and Shuli had the uh, audio engineering classes through urban cultural arts. Um, and just beginning conversations with John Muir Park Neighborhood Association. Um, that was our most recent grantee on um, getting their sculpture um, scavenger hug park started. So working on beginning stages of agreements with them. So all in all, all of those projects are moving forward at certain paces, um, but all good things for the community. Um, in addition, we're still working on, I'm waiting on some final signatures for Ben Sinor's uh, agreement. He was our Farland Park sculpture artist that we had approved. Um, so once that is set up, I can get him his initial payment and he can get started on fabricating those sculptures. Um, and again, still intending on having a spring slash early summer install for those. Um, and then lastly, our anticipated next meeting date is January 24th, uh, 2024. I say anticipated because our schedule hasn't been finalized just yet. Uh, and I also wanted to open up a discussion to see if we have any interest in pushing our meetings back just slightly in the mornings. So currently we meet at eight um, with us being in hybrid mode and some people, especially members of the public, if, if we ever have members of the public that are interested in joining us um, in person, our front doors are locked until eight o'clock. So it does create a bit of an issue for them to make it into the building, get inside and, and jump on the meeting if we start right at eight. So um, if there's, I'm interested in hearing thoughts on whether or not we're okay if we bump our meeting back to like 8.30 or even nine. Um, I don't know if there's a preference. Well, I was gonna, I mean, I think 8.30 seems reasonable. Nine, um, I don't know does not work with my personal schedule, but that should not be a deciding factor. Um, 
how many how many times have we run into that issue of the public not being able to kind of get in Beth? I can't get, you know, I'm, I'm not a city employee. So I've been the couple of times that I've tried to go in person, I've made it through, but people recognize me and they're like, oh, okay, you're here for this. We'll let you in. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I try to get there, you know, 10 minutes ahead of time just to be ready. So I agree. I think 830 for if, if there's going to be continual funding and grants and discussion and debate, I think for the public, I think that's, sometimes again they don't even um necessarily know brian you know they don't necessarily know where to go and so again mm -hmm. taking time to get oriented to the building and get in i think it's just much more accessible great that makes sense i'm for 8 30. anyone else have thoughts on this i'm fine with that too i'm okay i'm good okay awesome um, other than that, thank you guys. Make a motion. You can make a motion. It's change the time. Well, it's not on the agenda. It's informational. Oh, okay. But then, do we eventually have to make a motion or to change that? You may do bylaws. The bylaws. I, was, I don't even think we just need to publish it, don't we? I think it's just a matter of publishing. Yeah, if if it's in your bylaws or something like that, a lot of them have like it's the first. Thursday of every month at this time, you'd have to amend it. So you just have to find out where it's in your rules and change it there. If it's an approved document, you would okay. have to come back for approval. We'll bring it back for approval if necessary. Um, it's not on the agenda as an action item today, so I don't think we can take it up. But if if we have to bring it back, we will. Um, and if not, then we will. Uh, you'll you'll be notified <laughs> that the next meeting is at eight thirty. It actually makes it okay. The, um, your meeting dates haven't been approved yet because then it will be in that calendar. So. Yes. Um, right. Motion to end the meeting. Yeah. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.